Shalom everyone. So this video is going to be about Muhammad. Now lately I have actually been getting a lot of messages, phone calls, face-to-face -face discussions, if you want to call them discussions, including with family, about me apparently being or spreading Islamophobia, about me apparently lying about their beloved Prophet Muhammad, and I've been told to stop what I'm doing. And if they knew me, and if you guys knew me, you would know that I'm definitely not the person that gives up easily. Whether it be on a person that I care about, about a thing that I care about, you know, and especially when it comes to truth as well. And Oh, and I'm certainly not going to stop just because your feelings are hurt. And I think, you know, if your feelings are hurt, then I think deep down you know that what I'm saying is true. Because if I, or if you didn't think that, you would just go about your day ignoring me and just being content in your religion and, and, you know, in the way you choose to live your life. Now, look, I have to say that I think maybe once upon a time, Muhammad was a good guy. And I'm going to give him that. And I actually want to read a few hadiths that I've marked from this book that I got myself a few years ago. It's called 200 Golden Hadiths from the Messenger of Allah. And these hadith are actually very golden, as it suggests, and they put Muhammad in a golden light, really. So I actually want to read some hadiths. I don't know how many are marked, but I'll just read quickly. And the first one is uh, from Sahih al-Bukhari 6114, and it reads... The strong man is not the one who can overpower others in wrestling. Rather, the strong man is the one who controls himself when he gets angry. The next one is from Sahih Muslim 2626 and it reads, Do not regard any kind of kindness as insignificant, even meeting your brother with a cheerful Sorry, even meeting your brother with a cheerful countenance. And these are all sayings of Muhammad, by the way. And the hadith are like a record of his sayings and doings while he was here on earth. Okay, the next one is from Sahih al-Bukhari 12. A man asked the Prophet, what is the best deed in Islam? He said, Feeding others and giving the greeting of, sh of salam to those whom you know and those whom you do not know. Sorry, I was about to say shalom for a second, but it's pretty much, yeah, similar meanings. The next one is from Sahih Muslim 2965. Muhammad says, Allah loves the slave who is pious, independent of means, and hidden from the people. The next one is from Sahih al-Bukhari, number 13. It reads, No one of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Okay, a couple more, I think. The next hadith is from Musnad Ahmed 2865. It reads, There should be neither harming nor, re nor reciprocating harm. That sounds very harmless. And I think the last one is from Sahih Muslim 2699. Muhammad says, Whoever follows a path seeking knowledge thereby Allah will make a path to paradise easy for him. So we see the, the, these hadith are very normal in a sense. 
and however we can't say that Muhammad is the greatest of all the prophets the seal of all the prophets when we know and Muslims need to be honest with themselves too that there are hadith that there are sayings of Muhammad the things that he did that are not golden you know I think Muslims need to really accept that and not really say that oh you're lying or that person's lying about Muhammad when it's all from hadith and I know that you know some Muslims are gonna say well you know this certain hadith is not authentic or that hadith is not authentic and the ones that I will be reading now are very authentic and these hadith I'm gonna read them out I wrote there are six pages <laughs> um, but it's not a four six pages um, these hadith how do I put this don't put Muhammad in a very golden light you know when I read these you know years ago or even now when I was doing my research you know writing down the hadith I just think wow like it makes Muhammad sound very unintelligent evil um and that's the only really the only real world word I could actually use and it's horrible I know I'm offending your prophet but I just don't know how Muslims could actually even think that he was a decent human being, yet alone, you know, believing that he's an actual prophet of God. But anyway, so this first hadith is about muta marriages, and muta marriages are temporary marriages which are allowed in Islam. Um, muta marriages, like I said, are temporary marriages, so. You know, a guy can go up to a woman and, <clears throat> sorry, dry throat, you know, go up to a woman and propose marriage for a certain period of a day or two or three or three weeks or three months, however long. And that to me <clears throat> seems like, and this is going to be another insult, kind of like prostitution and but yeah, let's read the hadith. Um, this is definitely authentic. This is from Sahih Bukhari, volume 6, book 60, number 139. <clears throat> okay, so narrated Abdullah. We used to participate in the holy wars carried on by the Prophet, and we had no woman, in brackets wives, on us. So we said to the Prophet, shall we castrate ourselves? But the Prophet forbade us to do that, and and thenceforth he allowed us to marry a woman temporarily by giving her even a garment and then he recited O you who believe do not make unlawful the good things which Allah has made lawful for you um, this second one second hadith is about housewives this is a bit funny to say the least and very unhealthy. It is from Sahih Bukhari 3320. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, if a housefly falls in the drink of any one of you, he should dip it in the drink, for one of its wings has a disease and the other has a cure for the disease. I just think that is very unsanitary, unsanitary. can't even speak English. Um, this third one is about drinking camel urine. Yes, there's such thing, apparently. So this is from Sunan al Nasai, number 307. It was narrated from Anas bin Malik that some Bedouins from Uraina came to the Prophet and became Muslim, but the climate of Al Medina did not suit them. Their skin turned yellow and their stomachs became swollen. 
the messenger of Allah sent them to some pregnant camels of his <clears throat> and told them to drink their milk and urine until they recovered. Then they killed the camel herder and drove the camels away. The messenger of Allah sent people after them and they were brought back. Their hands and feet were cut off and their eyes were smoldered with burning nails. The commander of the believers, Abdul Malik, said to Anas when he was narrating this hadith to him, were they being punished for kufr, for kufr or for a sin? He said for kufr, which is unbelief. So Muhammad had them killed and cut off their hands and feet and smoldered ah, their eyes with burning nails. No comment. Now, these hadith, I've got two, two and three, um, which calls women stupid, pretty much, and that majority of women in Islam are, well, I'm assuming even unbelievers, are going to hell. Sahih Bukhari 2658, the Prophet said, Isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? The woman said yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of her mind. Second one, Sahih Muslim, 142. Muhammad says, O woman folk, you should give charity and ask much forgiveness, for I saw you in bulk amongst the dwellers of hell. A wise lady among them said, Why is this, messenger of Allah, that our folk are in bulk in hell? Upon this, the Holy Prophet observed, You curse too much and are ungrateful for your spouses. To your spouses, sorry. I have seen none lacking in common sense and failing in religion, but at the same time robbing the wisdom of the wise besides you. Now, it's funny that, you know, some Muslims say that Islam liberates women. And look, you might liberate your wife, and that's absolutely fine. But I think we can see that that's certainly not the case in Islam. Now, there is a hadith, which I'm going to read now, where Aisha herself, the youngest and the best wife of Muhammad, well, clearly states that believers are, or should I say Muslim believers are, you know, suffering more than the unbelieving women. And so this is from Sahih Bukhari, 5825. So Aisha says, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing woman. So obviously there had to be something really wrong within Islam. Now this next hadith is, how should I put this, a bit disgusting. Um creepy but I'm gonna read it anyway so this hadith is about Muhammad uh, sucking on young boys tongues um, including his grandson now Musnad Ahmed 16245 we read Muawiyah said I saw the Prophet sucking on the tongue or the lips of Al Hassan son of Ali may the prayers of Allah be upon him for no tongue or lips that the Prophet sucked on will be tormented by hellfire. I don't really have much comment. I really want to just laugh out loud, but I'm holding it in. No, mm, For no tongue or lips that the Prophet sucked on will be tormented by hellfire. Okay, so these next few ones, <coughs> excuse me are kind of my favorite ones because not only are they funny but yeah they talk about Satan and I'm thinking dude if you knew Satan like mm, that's not what he does but like I think he has better things to do but anyway so apparently in Islam Muhammad says that Satan sleeps in your nose and this hadith is actually very authentic. So it's from Sahih Bukhari, 3295. And it reads, narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, 
if any one of you rouses from sleep and performs the ablution, he should wash his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out thrice, because Satan has stayed in the upper part of his nose all night. And the second one is about Satan urinating in your ears. Also authentic hadith, Zahib Bukhari, 1144. Narrated Abdullah, a man was mentioned before the Prophet and he was told that he kept on sleeping till morning and did not get up for prayer. The Prophet said, Satan urinated in his ear. That's the end of the hadith. Now, so a man actually didn't wake up for prayer. He could have been tired, he maybe didn't hear his wife calling him, who knows what the story is, but instead of thinking, okay, you know, the guy's tired or something, the prophet just says that, hey, he didn't wake up because Satan urinated in his ears. Anyways, and so the last one is about Satan farting when he hears the call of prayer in Islam. This also is very authentic, Sahih Bukhari 1231. Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah, Allah's messenger said, When the call to prayer is made, Satan takes to his heels, passing wind, so that he may not hear the adhan, so the call to prayer. I really have no, no comment on any of this, besides wanting to really just burst out laughing, because... What on earth has to go through Muhammad's mind to come up with this stuff? Anyway, now, so that's like the end of the hadith that I've written down. Now, obviously, if you go, you know, through all the hadith, then you can see that there is plenty more hadiths like this. And just really weird and creepy and... Hmm. So there is such hadith... That include also, you know, adult breastfeeding. So, actual adult breastfeeding, like a grown woman breastfeeding a grown man. You know, in Islam, women and men are pretty much to be separate, you know, unless they're family, in terms of, you know, sitting in the same room together or socializing. And, you know, Muhammad's logic in this certain hadith about adult breastfeeding is if the woman breastfeeds the man um, how do I put this? if she was to breastfeed him let's say for example a, a certain guy at least for, let's say five times that kind of establishes a family bond and it makes the guy for example mm, it makes the woman less desirable to him. So then it's like, oh, it's okay. We can be in the same room together. Like, there isn't anything sexual going to be happening. So, yeah. I, yeah, that's a bit really odd to me. Anyway, so, so like I said, other hadiths include, you know, adult breastfeeding. Um, it talks about jihad. Um, it talks about the 72 virgins in heaven. Yes, I said that. And... And men having male slaves in heaven. And look, okay, insult again, disclaimer. The heaven that's described in Islam to me sounds more of a brothel than an actual heaven. And that's very concerning to me and should be to Muslims as well. But anyway, so there's also hadiths concerning apostates and killing them. Um, there's obviously the hadiths about the marriage to Aisha and Aisha is, you know, or was uh, Muhammad's youngest. So he was in his early 50s, she was six, he married her and then they consummated the marriage at age nine. Um, and there's obviously hadiths about or should I say, where Muhammad curses Jews and unbelievers. 
and there's quite a few. I actually wrote them down, but I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to actually read that. Um, just because I found it pretty offensive. Um, now, yeah, there's a hadith about many things, and to me they're very concerning, in my opinion. Now, you know, Muhammad is supposed to be a role model. You're supposed to imitate Muhammad, you know, all of you Muslims. And he is the mercy for all mankind. And if this is your role model and you think he's the greatest and you sort of just ignore Yeshua and like, I mean, I've been through it, you know, your own Quran says that Yeshua is greater, pretty much. But if this is your example, if this is someone that you're imitating on a daily basis, you know, especially if you're a fundamentalist, a radical, but yeah, if this is someone you're looking up to, I mean, I don't know, like I read this and, or all of the hadiths that I read, and I just think, and like I said even at the beginning of the video, he is he to me he to me is not even a normal human decent a decent human being, sorry. And he's definitely no prophet. You know, and some Muslims say, Oh well yes, okay, Muhammad sinned before he became a prophet, but after he became a prophet he didn't sin anymore, and clearly we can see that that is not the case. He sinned all the time. You know, he owned sex slaves, he I mean, when you read his life, I don't know, to me at least, you know, it's like, it's all about sex, and, and even if it wasn't, you know, it's, you know, there's so much killing, there's so much, and like I said, I mean, he calls women in Islam stupid, or just women in general, and then you, and then you read his hadiths and stuff, and you're thinking, yeah, because you're so smart, like, I mean, half of this stuff that he says that had, had the, you know, that people claim came out of his mouth. I mean, I don't know. I just have to laugh because that's all you can do. Like, you can't say anything because, you know, Muslims are going to deny it anyway or say, oh, that's not true or that's not a, you know, authentic hadith. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that he's definitely, to me, not a beloved prophet. To me, he's not a prophet. I mean, when did you ever hear about Yeshua doing any of this? When did you hear about Yeshua? I mean, oh, everything Muhammad does, in my opinion, is a sin. And, like I said, once upon a time, he could have been a good guy, but... I think his bad outweighs his good, and yeah, so I just wanted to really make a short video, even though it's kind of getting on 25 minutes soon, just about the Prophet in general, and really read from the Hadith, because I haven't done that before in my previous videos, and yeah, I mean, I'm lying about the Prophet Muhammad, but all the hadith that I've read are pretty authentic and they're there for even Muslims to read so how they could even justify his own behavior excuse me and you know still defend him and still get so upset when someone's saying bad things about him is concerning and um I think you guys need to really read more about Yeshua and I'm gonna keep saying that all the time in all my videos because Muhammad is not a prophet like he's no prophet he's certainly not mine but he's definitely not the prophet of the creator of the world he's not the prophet of my God and he never was 
I mean, mm, he's just bizarre. He's... And I know I'm going to get crucified for this, but, you know, many, many people say or call him barbaric. And, you know, those people also can read the Quran, they can read the Hadith, they can come down to conclusions, you know, by themselves. You know, I'm not the only one spreading Islamophobia, you know. I think people have been reading into Islam, you know, way before I started my videos. Um, so yeah, so this is my, yeah, this is the video. Um, I'm gonna sort of close it up and yes so this is it for me and yes until next time thank you all for listening um yeah